Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we've got a plethora of launches to show off, some successful, some, well, successfully failed. And this leads us to our first launch of the episode on the L4 Mark II, I believe SphereSat Mark II, looking to impact the moon, unfortunately, uh, one of the engines self-destructed on the pad, causing the rocket to not have enough thrust to lift off of the pad. Well, it was, <laughs> at least it wasn't a terribly expensive rocket and we got a nice pretty explosion from it. So we quickly built the L4 Mark II with the, I believe once again, the SphereSat Mark II um, to fulfill its original plan of launching to impact the moon. Hopefully this time not exploding on the pad. booster step and we are well on our way to a suborbital trajectory. This RD-108 is designed to carry us just short of low earth orbit so that our payload stage can pretty much have as much lee room as possible uh, to get us in a higher orbit. I believe that's the flight plan of this, is essentially suborbital at first and the AJ-10 stage will put us in a higher orbit and then lastly the Aerobe stage will kick us all the way to impacting the moon. Now I think this is the last launch of the L4 rocket. I'm pretty sure the next launch is on the L5 with a different payload, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see later on. Um, but there was definitely some problems, some things I didn't like about the L4 and things I didn't like about the current SphereSat itself. For instance, the AJ-10 stage wasn't really able to kick um, the payload the size of SphereSat high enough for me to think of it as a very efficient stage. Um, and this gets redesigned later in the episode. And also, the SphereSat stage itself, an Araby engine as a payload stage, it just isn't very good. There's a lot of more efficient engines that we're going to be able to have. And after this launch, we actually did get access to some better engines, notably the 0.4 kilonewton thruster, I think. Essentially, uh, the Aerobe engine and the AJ-10, I'm looking to replace with the next iterations of this, this rocket, basically, this payload. Not starting from scratch, per se, just upgrading the the hardware because the aj10 stage again just not as efficient as i'd like and the araby stage having only one ignition and it not being the most efficient engine it wasn't that great oh, it looks like actually i'm actually i might be completely mistaken because it seems like this launch actually is the first iteration of not using that Araby stage anymore. This right here is that uh, 0.4 kilonewton thruster that I just mentioned, where it has um, unlimited um, ignitions and it uses RCS fuel. So not very efficient, but the fact that you can use unlimited ignitions means you can have a very low TWR payload make it to the moon successfully. And so I'm 
I'm mistaken. I'm actually uh, utilizing that immediately. In the previous episode, we had not used this engine yet, and it was in between the previous episode and this episode that we were able to unlock some better engines. And here we have, I don't know if this was the L4 or the L5. Um, that is yet to be seen. And also, we are still using the, um, the AJ-10 stage. So we have upgraded the Araby because that one I definitely wanted to switch out with something better. But we did still have the AJ-10. And actually you'll see this one didn't make it to its intended target. What happened in that launch is the AJ-10 actually failed. The AJ-10 failed a, like a few seconds after its ignition to boost the orbit closer to um, the translunar injection, and it failed. So I just used the uh, the new payload stage engine to kick us back into the atmosphere um, because there was no way that it was getting there with the amount of delta V that was currently built into it. I think for a fact this is on the L5. This launch here, the one that the AJ-10 failed on, these are both on the L5. And it's the same exact engines with the RD-108 and I think the LR-89s as the boosters, but they are upgraded versions of these engines. Um, I think the burn time, the rated burn time is the same, but um, the only difference being a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more ISP. And therefore, we're able to get a little bit more delta V. I think a little bit more thrust as well. There's some very slight alterations there, but they're definitely beneficial. And here we have a lunar impactor. And um, you'll see here, not only you will have seen that um, that mission orbited the moon and then deorbited and impacted. And I was able to get both of those contracts. And then you saw it there, uh, we did upgrade the launch pad, which means uh, we can get a little bit taller rockets. Now, the weight wasn't a huge issue because I've been fueling the rockets on the pad. Kind of cheating, I know. Um, but the height was really bothering me since I was making these really inefficient payloads that got really tall and really long. And, well, I'm not sure if I have it in the footage here, but I've definitely did it with this design here. Um, this ended up being called the Lunar Delver, LD for short. Um, and its mission is to soft land on the moon. And I don't really have any time limit for this, but when I accept the contract, it gives me one year. So I only have a few shots at getting this right um, before the contract expires. Um, here I'm just messing with the placement of the batteries. That, that tank on the bottom there is going to go away. And a lot of the design you'll see here, I don't have a lot of the editor footage of this, but I've messed around in the editor for a very, very long time. Essentially what you see here is going to be sort of what it looks like. I end up getting rid of these structural pieces to save on mass. Um, I initially wanted to use these as sort of landing legs, but then after a while came to, con came to the conclusion that I did not really need them. If I soft land on the moon at a slow enough speed, I can just sort of topple over and that's fine. It'll complete the contract. Um, and you'll see here, actually, the AJ-10 stage is no longer on the stage. And I actually don't remember the name of the engine. All I know is that it, it is a new engine. It has one ignition, but it's I think it was more efficient than the AJ-10. It had a much longer burn time. What I'm doing right here is simply adding some external tanks to this design because this design went through many, many iterations. Um, and I actually have done several simulations that the footage will be after this editor footage of me attempting to land on the moon, figuring out problems with the design, figuring out if it, it was even possible. And essentially what I wanted to do these simulations 
Um, four, it's, their purpose was to make a design that was capable of landing on the moon. I was not going to simulate until I was able to perfectly land on the moon. Um, because I, I like the idea of just sort of winging it. But I needed to do this testing just to make sure it was even possible that I'm not wasting my time. And this design still had the landing legs here, and it I didn't give myself enough delta V in this stage, and you'll see I was about 400 some meters off when I hit the surface. Um, another one here, this one I think got very close. Oh, I was still I was still going way too fast for this one. And I think the one after this was the closest attempt yet. I, I did away with the landing legs and got a longer tank, more Delta V, and I think I just barely ran out of fuel as I got to the surface. And I fell and it was a few meters too hard. And the simulation ended when I touched down on the surface. And I'm not sure if any of the pieces would have survived, but I think this is design. This is the design that stuck. You see here, I'm wasting Delta V bouncing around like this. Um, hardly any left, but these engines can only withstand 12 meters per second. And I hit at I think 12 point something. No, 13 meters per second. I just like 20 more meters per second Delta V and that would have worked. But anyways, that proved to me that the design was possible, and I made some small tweaks here and there, not really noteworthy, and we have a brand new rocket, the L5, very R7 um, look-alike, I'd say, a lot of the same parts, but I just love the way they look, so I can't help but, but use them. Um, the L5 has a 1RD-108 in the center and four RD-107s along the, the sides as the boosters. And this first launch of the L5, it's maiden launch, one of the engines failed. So what I had to do is cut the one on the other side, decouple both of them at the same time. And since that point, this launch was pretty much doomed. Got a nice, nice separation that proves that the separation would work when the tanks are empty. Unfortunately, they don't when they're full, they will just collide with the main tank and I'm really lucky the whole thing didn't blow up. I mean, it would have looked cool though. The L5 is the first launch vehicle that actually has a dedicated Apogee kick stage. And it's using a kerosene and liquid oxygen engine. And I, I don't remember the name. This is the engine that I don't remember the name of. I'm hoping I'll mouse over it so I can get the name of it real quick. But essentially, I have two of these. One of them is the Apogee kick stage, and then it decouples, and there's another one of it. it I moused over it, but I was uh, I, it's too fast for me to see. You see another one right here. I use the exact same engine, and this will be the translunar injection stage, or. Well, it didn't look like it had enough Delta V for that exactly, but it'll definitely get us close. From low Earth orbit, not having to worry about the timing of falling back into the atmosphere and doing it fast enough. Oh, that's right, this is the doomed mission. Um, it has enough um, Delta V in that mis mystery engine um, to make it to the moon. It would have like 3,000 some. But the reason it had only 2,000 is because I had to use the first one to kick us way farther out of the atmosphere than I would have normally if the boosters didn't fail on that launch. You'll see here the L5, once again the same payload, the same mission to soft land on the moon for the first time. The contract is accepted, so time is ticking down. So far the launch is nominal, we are coming up to booster separation and into our suborbital injection. Alright, I went back and checked on that engine I couldn't remember the name of, and it is the RD-0105-0109 series. And it said in the description these were used on the Luna um, missions that this, that Russia did, um, so I, I think it's kind of fitting to use it on a mission 
to soft land on the moon. I liked the efficiency and the burn rate of it, so it seems like a good engine for the job. Uh, another small thing that uh, you might notice is the windows have changed on the top and on the left. I went ahead and replaced all of the um, KER windows with MacJeb windows. Not for any particular reason, I just I'm always, always using a MacJeb window for the Delta V stats, so I wanted all of them to sort of be the same. Obviously KOS is going to look like KOS, but um, I like the, the layout of this a little bit more than I did with uh, the KER one, windows. Right, so now we have ejected into a suborbital trajectory. This first RD-105, I think it's called that. I'm going to be calling it the 105, um, even though it might be wrong, um, is going to push us into low Earth orbit now. And just in case it doesn't have enough fuel in its own stage to get it there, I can unlock the tank of the TLI stage and use a little bit of its fuel because it is cross-fed and the same exact engine um, to push us a little bit but not waste precious fuel that we need for the translunar injection for this mission to work. Essentially this stage has to get us to orbit and the next stage has to get us to an impact with the moon, at least very close to it. Um, because the upper stage, the stage designed to land on the moon, cannot, it, it, it just cannot waste fuel or else it won't be able to land. The margin is very, very slim. And you'll see there, I did have to use a little bit of the fuel of the TLI stage to kick us into orbit, but we have 3,097 meters per second. And we, we should see here that it is enough to impact the moon. Oh, definitely enough. So about 3,000 meters, if done correctly, should be able to get you to a lunar impact. And we're just trimming that down with Principia here. After I've done these a lot in the simulations and in these launches for impacting it, um, being able to reach the moon has sort of become routine with Principia here. I also have a, um, a brand new version of Principia, the newest update. I was running a few months behind, and this one has some nice cool features. For instance, an orbital uh, information panel for Principia that's more accurate than what K um, MechJeb will give me because MechJeb is only reading stock conics. And also, if I were to change the uh, frame of reference to the sun um, and look at the lines of the Earth and the moon, they no longer have the KSP patch conic circle as well, if you can't tell. Um, it would show the moon kind of squiggle around the Earth in a way that's really hard to describe. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I enjoy the Principia update. Um, if you are running Principia and are running a few different versions behind, I'd recommend updating. I did have a problem with it not knowing, like there's a certain file missing on my computer, but I was able to install and find it pretty easily. So this is our trajectory towards the moon. This burn is essentially like a half hour long burn. And yes, I did do this not in time warp. Um, essentially, what I, the, the way I played this game is I usually have YouTube on the side and I've got lots of shows I'm watching. And it, it's a it's a real fun past time that's, that can get really passive like this, waiting a half hour, making sure that it's done right. And honestly, for landing like this, I'm sort of just eyeballing when to start the engine. Because frankly, I can't tell when to start the engine. I could do the math for it, but I feel it's far over my head, um, far too complicated than I have <laughs> the right to try to figure out. Um, there is a suicide burn countdown in the bottom left, but it's not accurate. Um, you'll see here, there's a weird bug with those tanks when I decouple them. They kind of just yeet themselves to the side rather than fall off in a, in a nice, you know, decoupling pattern. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but it hasn't caused any problems other than visual. So uh, maybe I'll replace those tanks with something that looks nicer sometime, but they're functional right now. And they don't get in the way of the RCS ports, which is a plus. It's the main reason why I used that tank design in the first place. 
But um, as I was saying, both the MechJap windows and the KER windows have a function of suicide burn countdown, time to impact. And the, the reason why they're not accurate is they are still taking information from stock KSP physics. And Principia completely changes that. So a lot of the information they give me about my orbital period, about what my apoapsis is, all of it's slowly like fluctuating back and forth because it's constantly being changed according to the stock physics, when in reality it's, it's not according to Principia. Um, and it'd be nice if I could have that information on the screen like that. Um, however, I'm pretty sure that it would be a little bit, mm, a little bit buggy to have it on there all the time. Um, I, I don't want it to kill frames, so pretty much I'm okay with using MechJeb. And just knowing it's a little bit off, you kind of have to eyeball it, you kind of have to trust your instincts with it a little bit more. And unfortunately with this one, it was just really hard to tell when to start the, the, um, the burn for this suicide burn. Well, so far it looks like I'm getting close. Um, the suicide burn countdown is going down and my plan at this point was to kill the engine when the suicide burn time happened and then light it again, uh, like 30 seconds later or a minute later, and then just keep doing that. I think my next plan was to do 30 seconds because every time the suicide burn counter would go negative, like I missed it, you just burn the engine and then it would go back up to where it would be normally. So I figured it would keep doing this for a while. So I killed the engines here, waited 40 seconds, and unfortunately, this time, it didn't go up fast enough for me to be able to slow down enough to not crash into the surface, just like the simulations. So the Lunar Delver launched on the L5 rocket did not complete its objective. It was still too fast, but we were very close and I believe it had enough fuel. It had enough Delta V to land if I timed it perfectly. And we do have a contract coming up for that very, or a deadline coming up for that very contract. So we have some time. We have, I think, two launches on the L5 rocket for us to be able to successfully complete this mission. Well, but that's a story for next episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.